So, we have spoken about what goes inside of the fencing, but what about the outside? Hello and welcome back to Tricore Gaming with me, Fletcher. And today, we are going to be tackling a suggestion from Onyx, who wrote a comment on my last hmm. enclosure video asking for some help. But before we get into what Onyx would like some assistance with, don't forget to like the video, and if you're new here, subscribe for more content from us at Triclaw Gaming. Right, on to the video. So Onyx has been watching my videos on how to improve your dinosaur enclosures, but has asked for help for when it comes to designing the rest of the park, especially when it comes to good decoration use and how to improve your path layouts. These are all good questions Onyx, so let's start with path geometry. What Onyx is referring to here is basically path layout. Good path geometry can really help with your park design and your enclosure design. So how do we make good shapes? The first part of the process is to understand how the path tool works. You have two lengths that it can snap to. Drag the path out to its maximum and you get a preset maximum length. Reduce the drag and you will see the smallest size possible. Knowing this is important for creating different shapes. Simple squares are easy to make as the path tool will always snap to 90 degree angles. As long as you maintain the same lengths on the sides, you'll get a perfect square. But what about more awkward shapes? Let's create a large circle. Now, for smaller circles, the game will automatically snap the angles for you, but larger circles need the creation of a framework or an internal skeleton. Start with the center line and always make sure that your center lines are an even number of lengths, regardless if you're using short or long. Once you have the center line, create a horizontal line, ensuring that your path is snapped to the halfway point. For example, here my center line is two maximum path lengths long, so I need to snap it after the first length. You will see and hear the path tool snap to that point. Create a horizontal line and ensure it's the same length as the center line. Now the next step is the difficult part. What we need to do is create a skeleton of mid lines between the center and the horizontal. The path tool will snap to the center of these two lines at a 45 degree angle. However, you may need to try a few times for it to be perfect. Draw out these lines from the central point to create this radial skeleton. You should end up with this perfect snowflake pan. From here, there's actually various things you can do. To get a perfect circle, merely ensure that you have the path tool set to curve and connect the ends of each line together. Use straight lines to get an octagonal shape, and octagonals are one of my favourites for smaller exhibits and plazas. You could also manage the same thing by creating a 90 degree L shape and then adding additional lines to the centre and horizontal forming the circle slice by slice. Now remember, the larger the shape you want to make, the more skeleton you're going to need to build. But another thing to remember is that once you have your shape, you don't need to delete all of the skeleton lines. Experiment with only deleting certain sections to create interesting internal shapes and designs. Let's take our circle then. I'm going to delete the skeleton lines on one side in order to create a small semicircular area. I'm going to use this for amenity structures, which will snap against the single straight line. But what about the rest of the area? Well, this moves us along from geometry to discussing the next part of Onyx's question, decorations. And I'm going to expand Onyx's question to bring us on to one of my favourite subjects, gap fill. Gap fill is a vital part in making nice looking parks. It doesn't matter how careful you are with placing structures, eventually you will end up with gaps and spaces that need filling. Good gap fill will help bring your park together, and it's a good way of adding unique touches to your parks. So let's look at some ways I've added gap fill to my existing parks. One good way of filling gaps is to create small gardens and planting areas. Here in my San Diego Lagoon Park, I've created this decorative feature in front of the toilets. Some modded in fences from Kaedenic help to outline the garden, and I've added some distinctive ground texture to make the garden area clearer. There's a few stones and some manually placed vegetation, and you have a small little planted area. There's lots of different styles you can use here, and you don't have to outline them with fencing if you don't want to or can't use mods. And if you want me to do a video on making natural looking vegetation and garden areas, leave a comment down below. But what else can you do for gap filling? Well, another thing you can do is to create small seating areas. Something I always do when adding in seating areas is to ensure that they are not too crowded with tables and to alter the path colour under the area to make it stand out. 
Another thing I try to do in my seating areas is to outline them with fencing or with the planters that the game does already have. This makes the seating area distinct from the other paths around it, and a good seating area is also enhanced by the addition of a nice feature. A fountain works well, or so, so do the small planters. Mix and match, and use mods if you can to create some unique touches. The next thing I want to talk about is mostly directed at those using mods, specifically the free build mods and the tree mod by Kyadenic. With these mods you can create more unique features for your parks, useful for gap fill, or to use as decor for your seating areas. There are lots of ways that you can combine these two mods to create a range of features. Something I like to do is to take the existing planters and add small trees to them to create your own planter variety. You can also do this to fountains to make them look distinctive from the others you have in the park. You can also mix different decoration pieces together in order to improve some of the more bland ones. For example, the round amber decoration is on its own a little boring, so why not add the pterosaur sculpture to it for some added interest? or some plants to help make it match the large fountain. Use free build to expand your creativity with the game, and for more on this, check out the stream I did a few weeks ago where I created some different ideas, and I'll have a card in the top corner for you to check that out. Now, with these tips in hand, let's do a little experiment. Here we have a few geometric shapes and a single enclosure. What I am going to do is create from this start a very simple park, and we're going to focus on the things that Onyx asked for. We're going to look at gap filling, creating an effective path structure, and more. So let's get started, and like I do with all of my builds, I'm going to talk you through my ideas and uh, we'll go through it together. So here we go then, and uh, this is the beginning of the build. So the first thing I wanted to do is get away from some of the flatness that you can see that the, this particular outline has. So I'm going to start by creating a raised entrance area um, <clears throat> with this circle shape here. Just stick this on to the edge there. And then I'm going to create a simple path down to the first enclosure and uh, I'll smooth it out a little bit so it's less steep and just do a little bit of terrain work around the edge just to make this a prominence um, and this is obviously you can you can use this style if you're going to put your entrance uh, in the middle of your park and now just giving it a nice bit of an entrance so uh, putting the park gate there a fountain spinosaurus skeleton just a little bit of design featuring going on a few rocks just to uh, improve the scene and starting with putting just a little bit of vegetation in uh, and some of the individually placeable trees that we now have as well just for uh, a little bit of extra uh, environmental interest. Uh, this is a very simple entrance design usually I go a bit more a um, bit more elaborate than that and I wanted to not have just a straight path from the entrance to the enclosure, so I decided to just create a couple of two little uh, side bits here and just give a bit of a decorative touch here with the obelisks uh, leading down towards the enclosure and then put some seating uh, next to them. So now I wanted to think about how I was going to join the enclosure uh, octagon to this particular side section um, and I wanted to make sure the paths were not all the same size really thin paths and really spaghetti like park paving just doesn't look good in parks so avoid it if you can and I decided I'm going to turn this open area to a garden so I'm just putting the fence around it so I know that's where I'm going to put it um, and then on this other side for the other side which uh, joining onto the um, the rectangle that's at this end of the park, I decided to put in a circle shaped sort of roundabout between the octagonal enclosure and the rectangular other section just because they weren't quite centralized so the circle makes it a little easier to connect them together and I decided to turn this little odd section into just a bit of a seating, a simple seating area with some fencing around the edge there. Um, obviously if I was going to be doing this to get it absolutely perfect and symmetrical um, I'd be taking more time but I just wanted to give this as an example for you. 
uh, sticking a fountain in the middle. I thought about putting tables around it, but I thought that was going to be a bit excessive since we've got tables above it. So just a few round amber decorative touches, the sort of thing people might sit on um, waiting for friends. And then I thought I would turn what's underneath that to another garden. So outlining it with fencing here, not all the way around. I wanted to keep one side open, um, but yeah, that's going to become another garden. So for this rectangle at the back, I decided to put a viewing tower in just to look over the park and the exhibit. And I'm going to turn this um, area near the tower to another seating area because it makes sense to have seating near the viewing tower. And then I'm going to put down a few amenities um, next door. Um, also, thanks to FreeBuild, you can phase structures into each other so I'm going to put the toilets backing onto the amenities so it looks like they're all parts of one structure and it also helps to just improve the look of those toilet buildings um, and here you can just see me going through and fiddling about with what color schemes I want for the amenities I would always suggest that you pick a good color scheme for your amenities and use it throughout the park and uh, I would advise if you want more advice on using amenities there is a video uh, in my tips and tricks playlist about using amenities and improving the design of them. So I've gone for this sort of white, black and green colour scheme which I think works well actually. Uh, I'm going to have to do something like that for one of my other parks and just looking through to see what sort of um, decorations I want. So now onto this seating area and I'm going to create a nice little fountain there by phasing two small ones together and then putting an obelisk in the middle. I think it makes a quite a nice decorative touch. And now I'm going to surround it with the planters. Now I'm going to come back to these in a bit. I'm just sticking these planters in here just as a temporary measure. Um, and at this end I thought I, I was, was going to continue but I, I put in the slightly taller new planters we have just to create a bit of uh, height difference between that wall and the other. And now I'm sticking in a few tables. This is probably a bit too many tables. I probably would reduce the number there, but um, uh, I just wanted to have a quick go. And I decided to put the visitor center in here just as a bit of a bigger attraction um, with paths leading up to it and around it. Uh, there we go. There goes in the, the paving there just to uh, make it look like you could walk up those front stairs. And I wanted to put some extra decoration into the visitor center, so I decided to put these obelisks in, um, curving around following that vegetation at the front. And then in the fountain, I wanted to do something, I was going to put the pterosaurs in, but instead I decided to put the amber blocks in. Um, so I went for the, the bigger amber blocks, just to sort of bring it together with the bigger round fountain we have. And then back to this side, so I decided to put a hotel in here and I wanted to give it quite a big sort of frontage. Um, I thought about changing the colour of the path in the middle of this frontage and then decide to go back on it because I just didn't like the way it looked. So I'm going to keep it all the same colour and we're going to turn this into another seating area basically. And then on the other side I just decided I'll leave that empty uh, for the time being. So again, like with the other seating areas, putting the planters around the edge just to divide it off from the rest of the paving. And again, I'm going to be coming back to these, uh, I think, towards the end. Uh, so that creates a nice little seating area, a couple of obelisks just to make the entrance look a bit more impressive. And I decided to put a fountain in the middle. I was going to add in make it uh, a bit bigger with these side fountains but then I decided just to put in this this feature of a row of fountains next to the hotel itself um, and then instead of the canopies I eventually decided to put the Spinosaurus skull um, on those fountains themselves just to create a nice another feature and a Spinosaurus in the corner and then the rest of this area we we're, go we're going to put the tables in um, oh yeah, I've, I had a few pterosaurs to that central fountain just for looks. And the tables I decided to be in sort of groups of three. So um, 
there's another group of three, and then there's another group of three, just to prevent it looking too full up. Um, and then I was pretty happy with that. Put a few uh, summer vegetation at that end of the hotel. And yeah, I then decided to sort of use part of this space for some landscaping. So I'm creating this artificial uh, ridge line or mound um, just to show you the sorts of things you can do quite quickly and easily. Um, using landscaping like this to fill up gaps in your park is something I would suggest you do. Do waste some space to do some landscaping because it just helps to make the park look less flat. And I, again, I'm doing something similar by creating this natural water feature that would run around the entrance and sort of separate this area of the park from the rest of the park that you'd obviously go on to build around it. Uh, just adding in some terrain texture coloration there just to highlight the edge of the water. And that's a trick I would suggest you use and if you want to see more of that, check out the enclosure building video, um, which uh, pops up in earlier on in this video. So these little triangular shape bits, I was a bit confused about what to do with them at first. Um, I thought about putting extra structures in, but nothing really fitted there nicely. So I decided to just make this a large plaza. I'm going to design a couple of small circular sort of highlights and uh, I decided I would put some big trees in there, some like sort of ancient trees or, or impressive trees. And then I would just fill the rest up with path to create this plaza. Um, a little fountain in the middle just to make it look a little less concreted. And we move on to creating the gardens. So step one is the rocks. Always start with the rocks and do them all at the same time. Do every garden area that you want to do at the same time. And then we move on to Kaiden Extreme Odds. So we, here we have the big trees going in, this beautiful orange oak and this red beech. And I decided to add a few more red beeches and oaks around the rest of the park. Some different colored trees really do help sp up, spice up your vegetation. And while it might not necessarily be 100% realistic to have orange oak trees or or bright red beech trees in the middle of the Arizona desert. You have to remember this is a park, you're going to have, realistically, you'd have gardeners, you'd have, you'd have staff to look after them. So as long as you look after them, it's theoretical that they would be able to grow. Um, but sticking in some more traditional palm trees here around the rocks. Sticking trees around the rock features, don't just put them willy-nilly in the middle of nowhere. Always try to, uh, phase them into the rest. And then we move from the bigger trees to the lower bushes. So the alpine shrubs, elephant grass, if you're using Kyadenix mod, the elephant grass I adore. I love it in Prehistoric Kingdom because it's such an easy way of filling a lot of space in a garden. It's really bushy and it covers up where the trees just simply stick to the ground. Um, adding in a few plants for color amongst, uh, flowers for color amongst these bushes just to help it look a little bit more interesting. Uh, some nice purple, pink and red ones. And then basically doing the same here. So you can see in go the low shrubs and bushes. There we go. And then you put in the flowers and um, there are lots of different flowering tree you can use. They're not just the purple and the pink flowers, uh, but you can you also use the aloe vera and the cycads from the and the cape aloes from the paleo plants um, and that really helps to improve your flower pot. So there go the cycads, those big bushes and uh, the low ferns and then you see me looking for those big flowering cape aloes and I put a few more in this fountain just to bring it together. Now back to this seating area here you can see sticking in a few tall palm trees into those uh, planter boxes just to make them look a bit more distinctive and also to further segregate that seating area from the rest of the park. Uh, sticking in some bushes under these tall trees, I decided to go for the aquatic grass that we have from the lagoons, which is another really good one to use if you don't want to use the elephant grass everywhere. And I decided to add just a few flowers just to, to improve that and make it a bit more colorful. Uh, was thinking about doing something with the Spinosaurus skeleton, looked through all of the decorations we have, 
but I think in the end I decide to go with the obelisks, my favourite flaming obelisks, and just put a couple of those behind it. Um, and there we have it. There we go. Very quick, but that is the perfectly good beginning of a park ready to go for you in the daytime. So, there are some tips for you Onyx and the rest of you in how you can improve the areas outside of your enclosures. Thank you Onyx for subbing and leaving the suggestion, and if you folks want to see me tackle your questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a like, and if you're new here, consider subbing and clicking the bell so you don't miss out on any of our content. I'll see you all in the next video, but until then, stay safe and goodbye.